Hi, I'm Craig from Train Direct. Today this video is about what casting plaster should you use. Um, there's, I'm going to cover four different types of casting plaster in this video. There's a lot of casting plasters out there. I've chosen four um, for different properties, different reasons. Um, some of them are extremely common, uh, one not so common. Um, first of all, I'm going to start off with fine casting plaster. I'm actually going to have to be reading from my notes because um, there's quite a lot to go through. Even with it just being four, I'm going to try and speed through it as quickly as I can. Um, so just bear with me. What I am going to do is I'm going to put like the technical gobbledygook right at the end. And you'll not hurt my feelings if you want to just go straight to the end, read the technical gobbledygook. But this video will allow you to actually understand the gobbledygook. Um, Okay, without further ado, I'm going to start with fine casting plaster. This is from uh, British Gypsum. Um, <clears throat> it's roughly about, on average, about three pounds per kilo. Um, and the water ratio is 1.3 kilograms per litre of water. Um, that's the only one that I've actually got full ratio for, for mixing. Um, thanks to a website that I actually looked on today. <coughs> uh, basically, one uh, fine casting plaster is one of the most common types of plaster to be used. It's mainly used in the building industry. Um, coving around the tops of your rooms. Um, sometimes you have like little decorative flowers, angels, uh, butterflies, things like that. They're all actually cast and stuck and put onto the coving. That's what someone that is going to be doing plastic coving around your room will actually use. Um, it's very, very cheap. Um, however, it's, it is a light plaster, which that is a plus. Um, it absorbs water well, and it will pick up a lot of detail texture, which is not too bad. However, it is still a soft plaster and it is still prone to damaging and chipping very very easily. It can be treated with different pla uh, different um, chemicals um, after the cast to make it a little bit stronger. Um, excuse me. <coughs> and another downside is it only has about two to three minute working time. So if you're using like the Hearst Arts Moulds, which I'll be doing a, another video, a review of the Hearst Arts Moulds um, later on, um, I'm going to try and shoot the two videos back to back, but I thought it'd be interesting to give you this video first about the casting plasters before the actual moulds. But these videos are going to be, um, this actual video is more for use with the casting plasters for the Hearst Arts Moulds. So. Anywho, the, it's got a density of 1 over 13, which that is quite a, that's quite a, a, a light plaster. The flexural strength of the plaster, that's its actual rigidity for flexing and bending. Um, the higher the number, the stronger it's going to be, the less it's going to flex. The strength is actually four newtons per square millimeter which it's not going to take much to go and that's it um, that has a good use in some aspects of casting when you're actually building the blocks if you're going to make a ruined building you're going to want a plaster that can be chipped away break easy so that's a good one the one thing not a lot of many people will actually know is you can actually mix different plasters um, you can do them in a different ratio to each other so if you take one of the topper end of plasters and one of the lower end of plasters like the fine uh, the fine casting plaster if you mix that with uh, hercrete stone however and you do a 70 percent uh, mix of fine casting plaster to a 30% mix of the hercury stone it's going to make your plaster stronger 
Um, I'm not sure it's going to be cost prohibitive, um, mainly because you're going to have to buy the two plasters. You're not going to use much Herculite stone, but you're going to make a strong casting plaster for cheaper. Um, and I've actually found um, Herculite stone is actually only that little bit tiny more expensive, and that's one of the top end plasters. Um, now I'm going to go on to the Her Herculite stone. Roughly you're going to pay about £3.50 per bag um, of a one kilo bag. Um, so it's one of the higher end. It's not one of the top end um, expense wise. You can get resin plasters, which I'm not going to cover in this. Resin plasters are really expensive. I've seen um, half a kilogram of resin plaster and it's been sort of eight pounds mark. Um, that's actually quite expensive and the actual flexural strength between the two is very, very little difference. It's like 0 0.1, 0 0.2. And don't quote me on that one, but I'm almost 100%, I'm 98% certain there's only like 0 0.1, 0.2% in the difference of the actual flexural strength. Um, <clears throat> Herculite stone, it's a very, very strong casting plaster. Um, it's not prone to chipping very easily. Again, I'll go back to the ruined type of buildings. If you're going to be building a ruined sort of building, this isn't a plaster really you're going to be want to be using. Um, personally, I do use this for my ruined buildings. It just it takes a lot longer, but you can actually snap off pieces of the actual plaster and you can get a by far greater finish, but it's a, it takes a lot longer. Um, <clears throat> it has a very extreme durability, so handling, picking things up, moving it around, it's not going to wear the plaster away very easily. Um, it's an off-white colour once it has set. When it's actually setting, it looks like a very, very sort of creamy colour. Um, I would say like between the, the, the hue between grey and cream <coughs> and it's as I say it's one of the top level plasters the, the detail is super fine uh, detail that you'll get from this um, I have never ever had to vacuum degas Herculite stone never and my dextral air pockets inside the moulds is next to minimal um, I've never ever had that much of a problem pouring the plaster and getting really decent results out of it. The, that is my actual preferred plaster out of all four. Um, it's the one I use the most common, I don't mix it with anything and it's given me phenomenal results all the way through. Um, I'd say at the end of the video I'll put all the densities and all the technical information and the strength, the rigidities everything right at the end of this video. Dental plaster. Dental plaster is going to be the most common. It's around about £2.80 per kilo. It's a good all-round casting plaster. Um, it's quite hard. It does pick up detail. It does pick up fine detail. Hence, that's why it will be used in the dental industry because when making false teeth, they need um, that detail for an accurate fit. Not only that, it's also the one that gets the less shrinkage in the mould. Um, I'll need to refer to this here, but the actual strengthening is 0.20%. That's 0.20%, so that's near enough microscopic. Um, the strength is 25 newtons per millimetre, so it is a strong, it is a strong plaster probably still would want to treat the plaster after you've cast it and built your model like coating with PVA glue or something like that. It, you do need to protect it because over time it will wear away. Um, next one is Plaster of Paris. Plaster of Paris is the most common as far as it is, it is, it's the most common plaster. All casting plasters are Plaster of Paris types. They've just got different additives to create them into a stronger material. On average,
average you pay around about two between two pounds twenty five to two pounds fifty per kilo of cat of uh, plaster of Paris. But it's a reasonably soft plaster. Um, it's probably one of the softest ones. That's down. That's down there. The I will give all four right. I will give all four like uh, my perspective on a scale of one to ten at the end. Um, the one good thing about plaster of Paris is the setting time. The actual setting time. The time it takes from wet to finish is between 10 and 12 minutes. That's in about an 18 Celsius. It's very fast. Um, it's very cheap. So that may be one that you want to go for for an entry level. If you're actually doing like buildings, you want to create them fast. Um, if you're doing them for yourself and you want to go there, you want to just do it on a tight budget, Choose a plaster of Paris, but remember, give it plenty of coats of PVA glue or some form of chemical which can strengthen the plaster at the end to stop it wearing away. Because casting plaster will wear away with time by just handling. And you don't want to spend all that time moulding and moulding and moulding the cast. Some, like from the Hearst Arts, you may need to cast 10, 15, maybe even 20 times, depending on the sort of project that you're actually doing. And it's a lot of work, it's a lot of time, and to see your model crumble away in your fingertips is soul destroying. Um, again, you can actually mix plaster of Paris with Herculite stone. If you mix the two, her the Herculite stone and plaster of Paris, if you give it a 70% plaster of Paris to 30% Herculite stone, you're going to get a stronger plaster. It's not going to wear as wear away as quick in your hands. It will remain. You will have that bit of flexibility. It will still chip relatively easily, but you have got. It will not wear away in your fingers. Um, the actual densi density of plaster of Paris is only one of one eighteenth. It's it's a, it's a very light plaster. The actual strength is 16 uh, newtons per sorry it's six newtons per millimeter square. So again, it's a, it's a soft plaster. Uh, overall, there are many other types of casting plaster out there. Um, there's another one which is a little bit higher than Herculite stone. Um, if you actually mix the two together with a Herculite stone and a, its stronger sister, and you mix them together in a 60 to 40 ratio, you can create a very, very, very strong piece of plaster, almost, almost stone quality. It's going to be extremely hard. It's going to be extremely hard wearing, but it's going to be heavy. Um, and for miniature wargaming, for using it as scenery, it's not a chosen choice of mine for that reason. It's just going to be a, he a heavy object, um, even cumbersome. You don't want to be picking up big pieces of heavy terrain, placing them on your battlefield, and then when you're packing away something that heavy, it, can, it would probably easily slip out of your hands. And um, Dropping them from a great height, however, I'm pretty certain that all casting plasters will shatter. Um, maybe later on in a follow-up video, maybe what I will actually do is I'll actually cast these four plasters, and I'll actually even um, cast the two mixes together, and actually take a hammer to the blocks, um, and actually see and we'll actually do a video and we'll actually see and how these actually act to impact. I'm pretty certain that that will be a very interesting one, especially with plaster of Paris, because I'm pretty certain if you hit it, it's going to be like a piece of chalk. It's just going <coughs> to... Anyhow, overall, on a scale of 1 to 10, I'm going to give plaster of Paris a... I'm going to give it 4 out of 10. It's not the worst plaster to use. Um, there is other plasters um, as more expensive I'm going to give of Paris, dental which is plaster five and a half out of ten. It's still up there. 
if I'm building something like really quickly and I want to build um, mass produce a mould extremely quickly, I will use dental plaster without a shadow of a doubt. The fine cast I'm only going to give three out of a ten. I've used it, I've used the fine cast even though it's extremely cheap. Um, I can uh, I've actually found it in builders merchants for around about nine pounds for twenty five kilograms. That and it says I live by a motto, cheap and nasty. Um, the next one is my preferred choice, is the Herculite Stone. It's I'm giving that one an eight and a half out of ten. It's extremely good. Um, I can't see past it. I will actually spend that little bit longer if I'm building a model, a smaller scale model, um, maybe to like the specifications of the Hearst Arts. I will actually stick to that and use the, Her the Herculite Stone. If it was a custom piece and I needed to build it mass massively quickly, I would choose the Dental Blaster. Okay, so overall, casting plasters, what would you use? I would be really interested to actually find out your comments and see what you would actually use, and that's you. Leave a comment in the box because I'd be really interested to see if there's any other den uh, dental plasters, <clears throat> any other plasters which I've not mentioned um, or even that I don't know about. Um, maybe I could try some of these and actually come back and make a follow-up video on this like an RE video so that would be interesting to find out um, but like I say the Hearst, the Hearst Arts review of the moulds I am going to be doing that one next so within one to two days you should get the, the Hearst Arts review video so from me that's about it this video covers it up and I will put the technical sheet right at the end of this so you can have a look. Um, well done if you've carried on all the way through this. It's probably just sounded like a complete load of bleh. But hey, um, some people may actually find it interesting. But like I said, leave a comment in the box. Um, I do read the comments. And happy wargaming. <laughs>